Hey, I've finished my pop-up roof and today I'm going to be doing a video going over it and showing you everything I've done with it. So in this video I'll go through the design, features and issues and I'll give a cost breakdown and finally my thoughts on it and whether it was worth doing. So there we are, that's fully popped up at the centre point, two and a half metres high, so you've got tons of space on the inside. This side does have four solar panels on, so the whole thing does weigh quite a lot. Each solar panel is about eight kilograms, so I think in total the roof is about 60 kilograms, 70 kilograms maybe. The fabric is a thousand denier canvas with polyurethane backing, which is completely waterproof. It's super strong stuff, you can really pull on it and it's not going to rip anytime soon. So I'll show you the inside. Turn the lights on. The top is just carpeted. As you can see, for me, I'm six foot, one meter, 80 centimeters, and there's tons of space. For me, it's even a struggle to touch the ceiling. There's a bit of glue left on the inside from when I was spraying the carpet on that I need to clean off. To pull it down, there's just a little toggle. So, if I go through how it's made and some of the points about it. So it's an aluminium build. There's some internal framing and then uh, sheet metal riveted to the top, which was then spray painted white to attach it. It has three hinges, which are bolted into where the roof racks would be bolted into, which is quite useful. The solar panels are bolted directly on, which apparently is a bad idea because it can mean that if there's no airflow underneath, they can overheat. So I might be readjusting that design at some point. Along the back, there's just some trimming with a bit of a rubber seal. I'll show you at the front. There's a bit of a slant to keep the airflow nicely over the top without it, it doesn't make any noise when you're driving. But I think it looks fairly well done, quite professional. Cool, then we should go and have a look on the inside. You can go and watch all the videos I've made of me putting it together from scratch, um, building the frame, attaching the fabric, putting the hinges on, uh, me cutting out the hole in the roof so you can see well, obviously I've had to cut the hole out of the roof. And to strengthen it, I've got these steel beams going along on each side. And um, that's just to strengthen the, give some rigidity back to the body because it loses a lot when you cut the roof out. To lift it up, there are two gas struts on either side. They're both 400 Newton, 40 kilogram gas struts. So in total, 80 kilograms of force. Even though there's, it's a good 70 kilograms, it's quite easy to lift with these on because obviously a lot of the weight is resting on the hinges and then it stays up quite well. So then to insulate it, I cut out a piece of Kingspan insulation board and I've just glued it to the ceiling. Because of the weight of the solar panels, the roof was starting to bend in in the, in the middle. So I added an extra steel beam running down the center, which, yeah, which helps support it and keeps it completely flat. I didn't want it to cave in in the middle because then it would start to collect and pool water and then on top of that I've just glued carpet onto the whole thing. To lock it when it's down I've just got a, a clasp and pins to hold it which works quite well. You do have to pull in the fabric which folds down and then I just sort of use this string to keep it out of the way. It's not very effective but it sort of works. I will be doing a full van tour later, but I've still got a few things to finish before I do that. Um, in terms of waterproofness, um, I have had quite a few issues getting it ready. It is completely waterproof um, through the fabric because it has a plastic backing on the other side, but the water does absorb into the canvas and um, due to the way that I've attached it, the water will soak up the wick through the canvas and come into the inside, so I've had to seal all around the insides. There was a strip of metal that was bolted to the frame um, holding the fabric in place, but that still meant I had to cut, ho uh, cut holes in the fabric to get the bolts through, which gives more points of, of leaking. I think if I was to do it again, 
I would actually turn the fabric around so it had the plastic coating on the outside and the fabric on the inside, which would mean that it was waterproof on the outside and you wouldn't have any wicking problems. I would also look at other ways of attaching the fabric, whether you could sort of glue it on or attach it in a way that you don't have to poke holes in the back of it. So the one thing I looked at as well was putting windows in the side. I had some PVC material for all of the issues I had with, with leaks coming in around the edges and over the top of the fabric. I didn't really want to try and try and attach the PVC. Um, I thought it's just an extra weak point and I don't think it's really necessary to be honest. It, you, you need to be able to stand and it would be nice to look out but it's not worth the risk of adding a weakness to the fabric and if it ends up ripping or leaking then you've just got another load of issues on your hand. Another thing I consider as well is I've made this very high at the top. I think it comes off a meter, which gives you about two and a half meters at the highest point. And that's because obviously on one side, it doesn't raise up at all. So to be able to stand in the middle or to the right of the van, it needs to go up very high to the left. This means you've got absolutely loads of extra fabric and the, you probably want to take it a bit lower, have a bit less fabric because it's so much hassle to fold it in every time that you put it down. It lets in a lot more cold air when it's up. It's just more work to deal with. And so I would recommend, well, make it as high as you need to stand up in, but no higher than that. I have, if you can see on this side, there's an extra beam going along on the bottom. This is to keep it slanted when it's down, meaning the water does still run off like it would do normally. One thing that I did do was I tried to make it low profile. So you can see it's only an inch or so high, an inch and a half maybe, because I wanted to keep it under two meters or 2.2 meters, I can't quite remember. But this made a lot of design decisions a lot harder, trying to squeeze it all in, when really I wish I'd just made it double the height and it would have been a lot easier to build. The aluminium's good, because it was easy-ish to work with and it's lightweight. However, it, you have to really take into account how you're going to insulate it because you get so much condensation dripping off the top of any place that's not covered. The carpet does a decent job of, well the carpet does a good job of stopping any of the condensation. But honestly I'd consider, I know it would cause other problems but making it out of wood because um, it's much much easier to work with as long as you coat it properly. And yeah, it'd just be a lot warmer and a lot nicer to work with. The, the aluminium framing took so long because there were hundreds of rivets to put in. Um, and then it's much more difficult to work with in terms of just attaching things and cutting it. And yeah, wood would be a lot nicer. So what else? Um, the rivets that I used on top, I used rivets because they were easy to attach um, with bolts. You can't get the nut down the, the tubing that I've used. so. Um, you, bolts aren't really much of an option unless you want to try and use riv nuts or something. Uh, the rivets are good but I have had to go over and silicon all of them because I wasn't really, I don't think they're completely waterproof. So yeah, there it is, there is my pop-up roof that I've made myself. The metal cost me around four or five hundred pounds. The fabric and insulation was probably about a hundred pounds. Uh, the gas struts, 30 quid. Yeah, in total, it's probably no more than six, seven, eight hundred pounds to do myself. So much lower than the thousand to two, three thousand pounds you pay for a normal pop up roof. Although it's probably not as good, it doesn't have the same functionality but at least I can say it's my own. And it does allow me to have the 500 watts of solar on the roof as well, which you might struggle to get on a normal pop top roof. Yeah, you can see I've got the solar panel wires coming through there, which are nice, don't cause too much of an issue. The wires I've just carpeted over, you can hardly sort of tell the difference when they're there. Yeah, you can see how much space you get when it's, when it's up. Got loads of space. So I'll show you me putting it down. So with the gas struts, it does make it quite easy. You just uh, put it down like that. And when it's halfway down, you sort of, it's harder with one hand holding the camera, but pull the fabric onto the inside. 
and then the same at both ends, and then it just sort of comes down like that. So you are left with this fabric hanging around. I probably need to think of a better solution for just sort of maybe pinning that to the roof or, or something. But yeah, and then to get it back up, just stand up, and then the gas struts. Well, it's extremely cold at the minute, so the gas struts do sometimes need a bit of extra help, but um, yeah, no, 400, 400 in each strut was easily enough to lift it up. I did have to go through about three different pairs because it's something that's really hard to decide what strength of strut you need. Um, I started, before I had solar panels, I was using 150 on each side and that was fine. And then the solar panels, I needed 400 on each side. So yeah, very heavy solar panels, um, especially the aluminium glass framed ones. So. Yeah, there you go. So, what are my thoughts on it? It took weeks of hard work and designs. It was a lot of effort and very tricky and frustrating to do. To be honest, I would not recommend doing it. If you really want something like this, I would recommend buying one or just getting a high top van, which in retrospect is really what I wish I'd done. But now it's done, it's nice to have, and it does give you a lot more space in the van. So that was a, that was my pop-up roof. It took, as I have a full-time job, it took a long time in terms of weekends and evenings, was very stressful in terms of designs and leaks and building it. Um, it's still not perfect and I, there's still a few changes I want to make to it in terms of keeping water out and making sure it lasts for a long time. Um, it's very nice to stand up but would I recommend doing it myself? No, not really. It's been, it's been really difficult. I think if you're, if you're retired or you've not got a job and you've got loads of time to think about it and design it better then then it's fine, but if you're short on time, it is absolutely not worth doing it yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is a shame to say. But yeah, there you go, I hope you like it. If you liked it, give it a like, and uh, if you wanna see some more of the crazy stuff I end up doing with it, maybe subscribe as well, thanks.